All right, uh, so we will start this course by understanding what is cloud. Okay, first we will understand how what is cloud and its definition so that we get familiarized uh, with this course and catch up with its, uh, with its services. So what is cloud? Cloud is a platform where you can have on-demand availability and delivery of virtual IT resources that you need for your personal use or business use. See, uh, when it comes to cloud, cloud is something which helps you uh, to get your resources uh, without having to spend uh, spend, so spend huge amount uh, or invest huge amount on the resources. For an example, if you want to have a server, you, you do not have to go market and buy a system and uh, get your get your services, get your needs covered, but instead you can avail a cloud uh, cloud uh, you can avail services from cloud providers where you have the availability of IT resources like servers, databases, and whatnot. So these services can be availed from the cloud providers and get your uh, personal use or business purposes in action. So first of all, understanding what is cloud. Cloud is something which helps you. Uh, if cloud is a place where uh, resources are available, where from where you can actually uh, make use of uh, these resources for your personal needs. Yeah. So next is what is cloud computing? Cloud computing is the delivery of computing services, servers, storage, databases, networking softwares, and more uh, companies offering these co uh, computing services are called cloud providers. These are the basic definitions of uh, what cloud and cloud computing is. Uh, cloud computing uh, is again a term which uh, which is uh, which is basically means that this is something where from where you can uh, fetch the uh, services from cloud providers that are nothing but storages, databases, networking, etc. Cloud computing operates on this this is a cloud computing model where you have it's where you have on premises cloud providers and hybrid on premises is something where a, a huge company where they have hosted their own servers in their organizations where they have their own separate databases uh, on premises service uh, servers they were where they have invested and available in their in their offices uh, let's assume that there we have uh, we have companies where we have huge amount of data and that amount of data if they if, and the services and the IT resources that they have in the organization if that is not capable of handling such a huge amount again they have to go uh, go out and invest or buy more resources uh, to the organization and that is something which is uh, which is not good for the company as as the uh, demand reduces the amount of investment that they have uh, invested on the resources that for for, uh, for the resources in the organization will go in vain so that is not the complete utilization of the resources uh, for what they have invested so uh, cloud computing is a model which helps you uh, to take your on premises uh, model that is on premises setup to cloud where cloud is kind of a sharing platform where you have all the resources as mentioned earlier. Uh, when I say sharing platform, it's a platform where you have all kinds of resources, for example, servers, your databases, your storage services and whatnot. They say, I have a, I have a company where uh, we have an infrastructure and requires a TVs of air data to be stored and I have less capacity in my organization where I have to buy out some more uh, storages uh, to cover my requirement. In that case, uh, as, as mentioned earlier, investment is something that uh, our companies always, uh, uh, always finds, uh, finds very difficult to manage. In that case, they can look for a cloud provider, something like AWS, Azure, or Google platform. These cloud providers will help them to lend these services. The services like storage services, where they can actually rent these services and save their storages and carry out their businesses. 
So there are three uh, cloud computing models, as we can see, one is on-premises, which is self-hosted by the organizations. The second is cloud providers, which are nothing but public clouds. These public clouds, uh, uh, we can create an account in, uh, in, in these public domains and avail these services. Next is hybrid model. These hybrid models are a combination of our private cloud, that is on-premises, and, uh, and public cloud, the combination of these two. That means there are organizations where uh, they have hosted their applications and data in their on-premises, in their own organization, as well as a part of their data and application or the infrastructure is available or hosted on public clouds. So they, they use the mixture of these two uh, which is nothing but uh, which is called a hybrid model. Uh, so organizations which are very uh, sensitive in protecting their data, protecting their uh, 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 their applications, their uh, uh, their internal uh, internal uh, internal data. So these things, if they are very sensitive and they do not want to trust any outsider, they protect all these information and keep it secure in their on-premises network. Whereas anything that is public, uh, public, uh, public, which needs to be uh, shared by uh, outside of organization, such information or such infrastructure, they can host on public clouds. So the combination of these two will be called as hybrid uh, cloud. Uh, moreover, uh, this public cloud uh, cloud providers like your AWS, Azure, and Google plat uh, Google platform. Uh, GCP, that is Google, Google Cloud Platform. These uh, these cloud providers uh, still give a high rate. I mean, high percentage of security. That is, they guarantee you that there are there is ninety nine point nine nine four nine ninety nine point nine 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 percent of security they provide. Still, in case if the company wants to go out for a hybrid model, they can avoid. Uh, they can opt for these services. So when I say on-premises, so in your organization, if uh, you must have seen a server room dedicated, a room dedicated for all the servers. So you must have seen uh, a servers like these where you, there are blocks uh, in one room where they are, they are maintaining it by themselves, stacking the servers one by one and everything, managing to upgrading these servers, managing these servers like, uh, see, uh, in order to manage a particular server or a server room, you need, it's very cost effective. I mean, it is very cost. It involves a high cost management. That is, uh, for, uh, for managing these services, you need uh, a proper AC room, a proper ventilation, a proper some, uh, management or something that uh, that is pre-checked and uh, constantly checks your upgrades, your everything. Uh, from end to end, you need to be managed. Whereas uh, you can see the cloud providers where they have a vast, uh, vast ground where they have created their own data centers and it is completely managed by your data uh, cloud providers only like AWS, GCP or Azure, et cetera. Et cetera. So uh, when, uh, when we are hosting our application or when we are hosting our infrastructure on on-premises, we have to hire uh, people like a uh, few IT teams that is admins, your uh, server admins, every, everyone. So this is very cost, cost consuming process where end to end we have to manage it. And uh, uh, whereas when we switch to cloud providers like AWS, uh, so the everything from end to end will be managed by uh, cloud providers. And this is very beneficial uh, by using cloud providers, is that because when you are uh, when you are renting out, when you are uh, taking services from cloud providers, they use pay as you go model. That is, you do not have to pay upfront, uh, nor you have to pay of uh, uh, pay pay a lump sum amount. You just have to pay for the minute or for the uh, seconds that you have used their services. For an example, if you have used one server of AWS for an hour, you have to pay only for that particular hour and after which you can uh, stop uh, using that services and you, you will not be charged anything extra. Okay, do you have any questions here?
Right. Uh, so this is one of the main reasons why organizations or big companies are switching from on-premises to uh, cloud uh, cloud providers because uh, it is very cost effective. It it runs in pay as you go model. Yes, pay as you go model. So these are the one of few of the major cloud providers available in the market, like GCP, uh, AWS, and Azure. So these companies are high have high stakes in the market. So, uh, as we were as we are talking about cloud and cloud providers, uh, so these cloud providers um, so not only helps you in uh, assisting you in granting or they are not only about storages. So when we talk about cloud, the first thing that comes into our mind is uh, cloud is nothing but a storage, like the storages that we have used in our daily lives, that is uh, Google Drive, OneDrive, uh, etc. So these drives uh, will help you to store your data, right? So cloud, when we when we talk about cloud, the only feature that comes into mind is storage. So cloud is not only about storages, as mentioned another example in, uh, in, in the previous slide. Uh, we can uh, we also avail services like uh, databases, your know, storages or servers or uh, some applications. Uh, see applications like uh, Zoom that we are using currently. So these applications is also uh, can be used as uh, can uh, can be used from a cloud. So not only uh, so basically the main is cloud is not only for storages but can also be used. Uh, to enhance the skill or to enhance the uh, capabilities of our applications, your storages and servers, basically. So to, inform, uh, to show you the features or offerings of cloud, so this is the picture where it, uh, it tells you how, uh, how cloud providers or how cloud technology is, uh, you know, uses our work in by just concentrating more on our development part and let the infrastructure uh, will be taken care of by the cloud providers. So in earlier days, we had a purely uh, hosted on on-premise networks that is self-hosting our servers, storages, databases, applications, like everything. So where we have to manage from top to bottom, that is the application data, everything from development from starting to end, uh, needs to be managed by us and plus there are there we should hire teams where they uh, where they should take care of uh, these applications the dependencies that are required to host or run these applications uh, the team has to manage by uh, by understanding what is the appropriate OS for the applications that is being built what are the servers that are required the storages uh, th that is required to host or run that application the amount of data that it will uh, generate by using those application, everything from application to networking. So everything needs to be taken care of by the organization. Our organization has to hire different teams to perform each and every task in the in the list. Whereas by by choosing the cloud, uh, cloud computing or by using uh, these cloud computing services or technology, we can uh, we can choose different services that a uh, cloud offering provides. Uh, sorry, cloud offers that is infrastructure as a service. Where this uh, we must have heard, heard a term that is IaaS, which is infrastructure as a service, which means where uh, we have we will manage the infrastructure part, whereas the other services like virtualization servers the storages that are required uh, for our application and networking, all these will be taken care of by your cloud providers. The infrastructure, when I say infrastructure, uh, let's say if I'm building a Windows-based uh, application, then I will manage what OS version that is required to run my application that I'm running. What is the runtime, Java runtime that I want uh, to run my application that I'm building? And the application and the data that is uh, what I'm building or what the application is. So these are the things that uh, I will take care of, okay? The, because these are some of the dependencies depending on the requirement that we have. 
if the requirement is something where uh, OS version uh, is required for applications to run, uh, and if you want a complete control over what OS version is, uh, then yes, the, if these services can be, uh, we can use infrastructure as a service by, um, by uh, for an example, we can, uh, like the uh, laptops or the systems that we have in uh, in our organization. Similarly, we can provision uh, servers in AWS uh, or any cloud providers like AWS, GCP, or Azure. So we can uh, run one EC2 instances or we can run some uh, servers on these machines and uh, run our application, test our application, and whatnot. We can. Uh, create a, an application, uh, sorry, we can create a server like we have uh, physically in our organization. Next is we have something called platform as a service where we do not have to worry about what run times and what uh, uh, operating system and not, just that we need to uh, take care of only the main part that is application and data that is required uh, by us because we are the ones who are building uh, these applications. And let's say if I do not have to worry about or take care of which, uh, which uh, take care of to, uh, managing my uh, servers, right? So in that case, we there are services that AWS or cloud provider provides you that uh, you just have to put in your code and AWS will take care of analyzing which operating system that it requires to run your application, what is the runtime and what is the middle end? All these things will be taken care of by the AWS providers. We just have to worry about the code and things that uh, that works. So once this is given, so AWS will take care or cloud providers will take care of uh, the rest of the services. Similarly, we have another service where the complete uh, control, uh, where the complete management will be taken care of by uh, AWS, uh, something like software as a service. Uh, so when I say software as a service, like uh, like the software, where I just gave you an example of Zoom. Uh, say uh, there is a software that is available by uh, cloud providers. Then they can lend you these uh, softwares to use. And the, uh, the running of these software must be running on some server, must be running on some storages, networking, all, all of these. Everything from end to end will be taken care of by AWS or any cloud providers. So here we do not have to worry about anything. Instead of buying or renting out or availing any services of cloud providers, we can avail service of a software. This is called a software as a service. Let's talk about a few services that uh, any cloud providers would provide. I would offer first a server that is a computer of device that provides programmable service to this means that uh, so uh, like I said earlier you can avail uh, th there are a list of services uh, that cloud provider provides and one of the services is a server server is basically uh, in a layman terms is a computer which can help you uh, to provision directly on cloud okay like where like the way how uh, computers we have at our home and offices uh, similarly we can create um, any uh, any operating system server directly on cloud so this uh, these uh, these services will act like a, a normal physical machine Okay, who will which will have a raw operating system wherein you can install uh, the softwares, uh, dependencies, so packages, everything. These servers will act like a normal machine. And uh, as mentioned, so these servers, uh, so the, the the time that you use these services or servers, you have to pay only for that much of time. Okay, no, not a minute extra. Not uh, there is nothing that you have to pay any amount upfront, nor it will charge you anything uh, post uh, post usage. So once you are you have started using any services, once you have terminated or deleted a service, your billing will stop, and you are paying only for that min the, uh, those minutes. Next, we have something called application servers. 
So application servers are again uh, nothing but uh, the services that a cloud provider shares with you. So these services, with the help of these services, you can run your applications. Um, we have something called Elastic Beanstalk in AWS where you can run your applications. Then we have web servers, uh, web servers like Apache, Tomcat. So the, with, the, with these web servers, you can host your website. Then we have serverless, uh, serverless offerings. These serverless offerings are something a uh, cloud computing execution model in which the cloud provider allocates machine resources on on demand. So to give you an overview, so um, your serverless machines will be uh, will come under platform as a service where you do not have to worry about the infrastructure that it is being used or you do not have to manage the infrastructure. You just need to worry about the application and its data. You need to pass the application and data uh, to your AWS or cloud providers. Cloud, uh, these cloud providers will take care of the infrastructure and run your code. Basically, these serverless execution will happen uh, mainly on some events. Uh, let's say, for an example, if you have to perform any certain action on uh, at certain minute, you set the timer, uh, AWS uh, or cloud providers or AWS will trigger your function, will trigger your program uh, at, the, at, the, at that minute and run your application without having you to worry about the infrastructure. So any questions you have? No? So this is uh, just an introduction on what cloud is and what are the services that it provides um, or what are the offerings that it has uh, in a broader view. Okay, wherein now uh, we can, in, in the next session, we will start on what cloud provider is and um, mostly on AWS and understanding on what, what, how AWS works and um, creating an account on AWS and having an overview on the services that AWS provides.